Hello everyone. In this video, you're going to learn how you can create your custom key decoding strategy in Swift language. So the first question is, well, why do I need a key or a custom key decoding strategy? Well, let's go ahead and consider a scenario where you are getting JSON from some sort of an API. We will take it really simple JSON which will have a name field. And the name can be anything. So we're just going to put John Doe. And we will also have the age. And we're considering that we're receiving this from some web API. Great. Now I need to decode this JSON and populate my own custom model. So let's go ahead and create the model. Make sure that the model is conforming to decodable protocol. The model will have properties for name as well as age, which will be integer. Now I can go ahead and use the JSON decoder to decode it, which means I can use decoder decode to a type, which is user.self and the data dot utf8. You can use try optional so that if the decoding fails, it doesn't really blow up. It just gives us nil. And now we can go ahead and print out the user, which is a decoded user. Another thing to keep in mind over here is that our JSON dot data is going to return optional. Now in your real application, you should make sure that you are not force unwrapping. I'm just going to do that. I know I'm going to receive a comment about this, but hey, it's not going to blow up because the code is right there. All right. So it's not going to be nil. But if you want to, you can unwrap it in a different way, which is kind of like this. JSON data equals to JSON dot data using dot UTF-8. Else we can go ahead and throw an error, but since we're in the playground, I don't think it's going to reach that line, but let's go ahead and do something. You know, unable to convert or unable to get data or whatever. And now, just to make you happy, we can go ahead and pass in JSON data. Let's try to run this. And you can see that it has decoded successfully. So we didn't really have to do anything custom. It just works. And the reason it works is that the name that is inside over here in the JSON is the property names are actually the same. Now let's say that JSON that is being returned from the server is different. Instead of returning name in small casing or lowercase, we return name like this. And the owner of the web API returns name like this. Now, you might be thinking, why would anybody do that? Well, your API or your web API might be written in a completely different platform where returning name, age, or properties with a first letter being uppercase or capital is perfectly normal. So it's not that they are on purpose trying to make life hard for you but it is just their default uh, because in different languages, they just convert those things and it's default. So if you have certain or this kind of a scenario, and if I try to run the app right now, you can see that the decoding fails. Instead of blowing up, since we're using try optional, it returns you nil because it didn't or it wasn't able to decode correctly because the name and the age are not matching. The name and the age are both capital or uppercase character, the first one, and name and age in the user are all lowercase. Now we can easily solve this mapping problem by exposing a, an enum or a structure, but an enum that is coding keys and providing the actual coding keys, meaning the actual mapping, where we can say that the name property will be mapped to the capital name and the age property will be mapped to A with a capital A, age with a capital A. And now if we go ahead and run this application again, you can see that it works perfectly fine. 
and it is mapped correctly. And that's fine. I mean, that's a very good solution. But what happens if you don't have name and age only, but you have 10 other fields that are exactly in this order or in this particular sequence? Meaning the first letter of each field is capital. You can still use the coding keys and you can do the mapping manually. But maybe there's an easier way to do this. So if you have 10, 20, a lot of fields that are in the same structure with the field name, the first letter is capital, maybe it is time to write a custom key decoder. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that. I'm going to go ahead and remove the coding keys over here because we'll be writing our custom thing. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create something called any key, which is going to make sure that we are assigning and we're returning the correct any key. Now this code is actually from Apple. It's a pretty simple line of code. So let me go ahead and paste it over here. So any key is the one that where you send in an actual key, which can be name, which can be age and it will simply assign it to the string value. If your key is integer, we are just gonna ignore it because, well, in our case, our keys are only strings, not integers, all right? Next, we're going to go ahead and create our decoding strategy. So for that, I'm gonna go ahead and create a struct. I will call it decoding strategy. Now you can call it anything you want and I'm going to create a static function or a static property, and we will call it first upper case letter. It's kind of like a weird name, but it will return you an coding key array. Well, and which will return so it's a basically a closure that takes in a coding key array and then it returns you a coding key. So that means that we when we return, we will get access to the keys, which is an array of coding keys. This will return us a coding key in. And now this is our opportunity to make sure that the keys are matching. So keys over here will be the keys, which will be name and age, all right? So what we're gonna do is we are going to go ahead and get the key first, which is keys.first. Now we will go ahead and do the modified key. All right, so what does it mean modified key? Well, the key that we are going to get over here will be the one with the capital N. So we want to modify the key so that we can get the first letter small. So I can use a technique which is string value dot prefix, the first letter dot lowercase plus key dot string value dot drop first. So basically what we are doing is we are taking the first value, we're doing a lowercase, which will be n with a small n, plus all of the remaining part, in, but not the first one. Meaning key dot string value dot drop first mean that this will be the key called name without the n, because we already got access to the n, which is small right over here. So this part, will be A, M, E. And when they join together, it becomes a small name, meaning lowercase name. Now we can go ahead and return any key, and we can pass in the string value of that modified key. Perfect. Now any key is gonna return optional, we're gonna unwrap it. You can perform safe unwrapping if you want to, but in this case, if this decoding fails, eventually it will return you nil because of the decoder. So now we have already created our decoding strategy. We can start using it. The first thing I'm gonna do is create a decoder. So JSON decoder. Next, we need to make sure that the strategy is set up. So decoder dot key decoding strategy. In this case, I'm gonna use custom, but you can see that there is some other ones available, convert from snake case. So if your web API is sending snake case, you can use this decoding strategy. Unfortunately, our 
API is not sending straight snake casing. So I'm just going to use my own decoding strategy dot first letter uppercase. And uh, that hopefully should be it. So now when we try to decode, it is going to use our own decoding strategy. Make sure that our, I'm not sure what happened over here, name. Let's go ahead and make sure that the name is there with a capital M. Not sure how it actually got changed, but there we go. All right, so let's look at all the stuff. Everything looks fine. Name is capital with N. A is capital with A. Let's try to run it. Okay, so we are getting nil. Something is going wrong. Let's go ahead and check out what we are doing wrong. So we created our decoder. We set the decoding strategy, but we ended up utilizing or using a new decoder. We didn't even use our decoder. So let's go ahead and do that. There we go. Let's try to run it. And there we go. We have successfully decoded a different kind of JSON without performing manual mapping. In this case, we created our key decoding strategy, which is going to automatically map name with a capital N and age with a capital A to the properties small name and small age. All right, so this is how you can create a custom key decoding strategy in Swift. Hey, if you like this channel and want to support my videos, then check out my Patreon page. You can become a patron and you can support the video and the work that I do. As you can imagine, each video takes hours and hours of work and research and editing. So your support is always, always very generous and appreciated. I also launch a brand new course on Swift for Intermediate and Advanced Developers. It was just launched a couple of days ago, and you can see I already have 178 students enrolled. You can find a link to the course right there in the course description. This is a seven plus hour course that goes through enum, properties, optional, initializer, error handling, and many more lectures associated with Swift language and how to write great clean code using modern Swift. So if you want to access this code, check out the YouTube description and you will find a link and become a patron your support is always appreciated thank you so much